if you find yourself in a relationship in which you are the giver and the person that you're involved with is the taker and that you're starting to realize that you actually don't enjoy the things that you used to do or you don't even do them anymore, uh, like walking or hiking or hanging out with family or friends, uh, gardening or cooking or whatever uh, you used to do before you got into this relationship. And you now find that you're not doing any of those things. You just sit and wait for this person to either call you or come by to see you. Uh, you're just hanging on to when this person is going to come back into your life. Meaning, are they going to call you today? Are they coming home and they're not going out with their friends? In other words, all your focus has now gone around this person. And they have become the center of not only your life, but also your ego, your thoughts, your attention. If you are in a relationship like this, most likely you're in a relationship that's very toxic very unhealthy and this is the video for you to watch my name is Fazia Shah welcome to my YouTube channel in today's episode I will be discussing are you in a toxic relationship so let's get started Toxic relationships are often characterized by betrayal, by blame, putting the blame on the on, on you or the other, other person, uh, control, disrespect, emotional abuse, shame, guilt, withholding affection, fear, bullying, a lot of drama, a lot of inconsistency in what they say and what they do a lot of gaslighting, a lot of trauma bonding, and a lot of codependency. In a healthy relationship, you would have a relationship that is interdependent, not codependent. But toxic relationships often are codependent, where you're on a seesaw. I'm okay, you're not okay. You're okay, but I'm not okay. And you're going up and down. And some of these are internal thoughts. And then when you're in a toxic relationship, those thoughts actually become ingrained. And the ego loves to just create more thoughts and more thoughts and more thoughts. You know, a major problem is when people start to believe what the messages are in a toxic relationship. And if you've been through trauma in your childhood, most likely you will end up in a relationship that's toxic unless you have worked through it. And then, of course, you would have your filters up and you would know what to look for. But here are the things, as I was describing earlier, here are things that you must look at. Is the relationship one-sided? In other words, you are the one who's giving making changes in your lifestyle, making changes with your schedule to accommodate this person. That relationship is toxic. It's unhealthy. It is eventually going to lead you to feeling resentment, feeling empty, feeling lonely, feeling angry, frustrated. But you don't share your feelings in the fear that you will be shamed, you will be blamed, you will be dismissed or that you're crazy. So that part of the gaslighting. And the trauma bonding would be the intermittent reinforcement. Sometimes they're very good. And, and I often hear this, you know, when it's good, it's really good. When it's bad, it's really bad. And that's what you get. And most likely, I would say that these type of relationships often involve a narcissist. Because they want you to circle around them, revolve around them. It is the grandiosity and the need for attention and lack of concern and care for anyone else. As long as my needs are getting met, we're good. So it's very important that you recognize that when you're in a relationship that's toxic, unhealthy, 
you will start to experience physical problems. We see a lot of people having, you know, health problems like blood pressure, diabetes, or because it's constant stress. You're under constant stress um, as to not knowing what to expect. Walking on eggshells. Because you don't know when the person comes to see you, what kind of mood they're going to be in. Or when are they going to actually put the rug, pull the rug from under your feet. So I highly recommend reestablishing your relationships if you have given those up in order to be in psychological servitude with this person that you're involved in, then I highly recommend, like I said, re-engage your friends, reconnect with them, connect with your family, go and get some support from them, friends, and go back into the hobbies and activities that you used to do. Because ultimately, it's your emotional well-being that is at stake. So unhealthy relationships have a ripple effect in various areas of your life. Not able to go to work, having poor appetite, isolating, feeling depressed, feeling anxious. All this is coming from the egoic mind. Because that's where the narratives are. That's where the constructs are, concepts and labeling. So that is very active. And it gets even more active when you're in an unhealthy relationship. Because the ego has to have a villain. The ego has to have something that it, it can grab to. And then more thoughts get created and more thoughts get created. And so I highly recommend doing breathing exercises, breathing techniques, so you can actually let the presence grow within you. Take long walks, do some grounding, walking on grass, letting the antioxidants soak through your feet. Go hiking, go cycling, go back into your life that used to make you very happy and joyful. But none of that can be achieved if you are in your head, if you are in your mind. You have to come out of that and learn to be more present and still. So you can discover your self-worth and who you truly are. Life, consciousness, awareness. And when we are living through the self, we know what is good for us and what's not good for us. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I am wishing you the best. Thank you.